The local evening news is brought to you by Nagico, local agents, Bryson's Insurance. Good evening. Thank you so much for having joined us for the ABS Evening News on this holiday. Um, a very good evening and a warm welcome. My name is Garfield Burford. A special welcome to those joining us on our online platforms. Let's begin with news that the political parties are gearing up for nomination day tomorrow, but so too are independent candidates. At least three are set to be nominated for the January 18 general elections. This evening, we review how independent candidates have fared in the previous 15 general elections since universal adult suffrage in this country, and also gauge the views of a political pollster. Here's more from our Kelisha Humphreys. Though all candidates remain unofficial until nomination day, some independent hopefuls have received attention as election day draws near. At least three independents are expected to be nominated for the election, including Asset Michael. Director of the Caribbean Development Research Services, Peter Wickham, tells ABS the electoral fight will be rigorous despite Michael's popularity over the years. The, the reality is that the polling that we have done in Antigua and Barbuda has shown that the independent candidate, Asa Michael, is not likely to be able to do well. Um, that analysis is based on the assumption that he would need to take at least 20% of the political party support to enable him to be contestable, to have the ability to contest the Catholic constituency. Wickham states, the political situation is rife with obstacles for all independent hopefuls. Well, the simple answer to the question of independence in the Caribbean region is that it's highly unlikely. Um, we have not had significant success in terms of independent candidates since the two-party system and the political party system formed around the 1950s. The Antigua and Barbuda Labour Party, ABLP, the United Progressive Party, UPP, and the Democratic National Alliance, DNA, are each poised to nominate candidates for all constituencies on the mainland, while the ABLP is to nominate a candidate for Barbuda. Missing Link, Voice of the People, is also set to nominate up to 10 candidates, six of whom are already attached to the party. While noting independent candidates traditionally face an uphill task, Wickham says the improbable could be possible. He cites the 2021 election of the independent candidate Wayne Panton as the premier of the Cayman Islands. He adds to the former prime minister of St. Vincent, Sir James Mitchell, became the Prime Minister as an independent candidate. The first independent candidate to win a general election seat in Antigua and Barbuda was Claude Earl Francis of Barbuda in 1976. Francis lost his seat to another independent candidate, Eric Burton, in 1980. The 1984 election represented the third time an independent candidate won in Antigua and Barbuda with a victory for the incumbent, Eric Burton. Alicia Humphreys, ABS News. Thanks, Alicia, for, of course, keeping us across those developments. Of course, this will be a January 18 general elections will be the 16th since universal adult suffrage. Meanwhile, the Antigua, Barbuda, or, uh, the Antigua and Barbuda Electoral Commission, ABEC, has issued a reminder of the nomination centers. ABEC's public relations officer, Elisa Graham, outlines the centers to be used tomorrow. The following are the centers for nomination in the 17 constituencies. St. John City West, Villa Government School. St. John City East, Princess Margaret Secondary School. St. John City South, Mary E. Pickett Government School. St. John's Rural West, Multipurpose Cultural and Exhibition Center. St. John's Rural South, Golden Grove Government School. St. John's Rural East, Clare Hall Secondary School. St. John's Rural North, Cedar Grove Government School. St. Mary's North, Antigua State College. St. Mary's South, Bolins Government School, All Saints East and St. Luke, Irene B. Williams Government School, All Saints West, Seavey Farm Government School, St. George, Cutters Government School, St. Peter, Parham Government School, St. Philip North, Glanville Secondary School, St. Philip South, Freetown Government School, St. Paul, Liberta Government School, Barbuda Holy Trinity Government School. Election centers are open from 8 in the morning to 6 in the evening tomorrow. In an earlier interview with ABS News, Graham explains how candidates become officially nominated. Now, in order to be nominated, a candidate must have a proposer and a seconder and eight other persons who basically endorse their candidacy. 
And also, there's a fee of $500, $500. Also, they must be 21 years and over. They also must be a citizen of Antigua and Barbuda, no dual citizenship. And also, they should not have any known criminal records. So those are some of the, the official um, requirements of somebody who is, who is eligible for candidacy here in Antigua and Barbuda. And of course, ABS, as your election headquarters, will bring you full coverage from the centers across the island tomorrow. In other news now, Antigua and Bravida will soon see financial fruit born through its partnership with the African Export-Import Bank, or Afrexim Bank. Our Ursula Charles Jr. has a report on the major multi-billion dollar partnership. According to international media, 1.5 billion U.S. dollars in development funding will soon be available for Antigua, Barbuda, and eight other CARICOM member states. The board of directors of African Export Import Bank, or Afrexim Bank, has approved the funding to enable member states of the Caribbean community that have ratified the partnership agreement with Afrexim Bank to tap into the bank's various financial instruments. This country's Education and Sports Minister, the Honorable Darrell Matthew, signed the initial agreement in Barbados on behalf of the government with the bank. The signing took place on the sidelines of the inaugural Africa-Caribbean Trade and Investment Forum held in Barbados in September this year. The partnership, though, has recently been ratified by Barbados, but is yet to be ratified by the other eight signatories. Media reports say the partnership agreement between Afrexim Bank and the constituent countries of CARICOM consolidates the bank's efforts to promote and develop South-South trade, and specifically trade between Africa and the Caribbean, in line with its diaspora strategy. The $1.5 billion U.S. dollar financing will enable CARICOM countries to access the bank's financing instruments through financing facilities to aid economic sectors to include tourism, healthcare, renewable energy, shipping, mining, agriculture and agribusiness, air links, and aquaculture. For ABS News, I'm Ursula Charles Jr. Thanks so much, Ursula. Now, questions have been raised after some visitors on an Antigua Airways flight had challenges settling into their accommodation. A charter flight from the African continent arrived about two this morning in Antigua, in Antigua with individuals, some of whom did not have pre-arranged accommodation. So joining us this evening with more and an explanation of what happened is Immigration Minister uh, E.P. Chet Green, who joins us via Zoom this evening. Very good evening to you, Minister Green. Really appreciate you joining us this evening to give us updates on this. Uh, so how how many visitors arrived, can you say, on this charter flight? And what happened with your accommodation? I got to your, your viewers. Hello? Right, yes, we're, we're hearing you, Minister. So we're asking, yeah. what happened with this flight this morning and how many visitors arrived? The flight arrived um, this morning about 2 a.m. with 265 passengers and 10 crew members on board. Um, the challenges this morning were purely and solely that of accommodation. Um, there were no, I want to show you that there were no, there were no breaches of immigration uh, rules, regulations, laws. Um, immigration officers are commended for having professionally handled the arrival of flights with dispatch, ensuring, of course, that everything, including government revenues by way of uh, the, the, the visa fees were received. Right. Uh, in terms of the accommodation, Minister, what went wrong with that? And were they not supposed to have declared their accommodation before? And they, and they did. Accommodation was, was declared prior to arrival. But we also know, um, Gab, that there is no, no reason a person is going to change his or her accommodation upon landing. There's no violation in that one. Um, so persons apparently did not particularly like the accommodation that they had prior, um, prior to arrival. And so they opted to make other arrangements upon landing. And that is quite normal every day almost within the context of, of visitor arrivals. Um, we see it in, in North American flights, European flights, flights around the world. Um, what I can report to the nation, however, is that all the visitors on the flight that arrived this morning have been accommodated in, in um, facilities across the island. And so there is no issue now. Like I said, that was the only issue with respect to those arriving this morning, that of accommodation. All visitors have now been accounted for, we're accommodated to concern, and so it's really much ado about nothing. All right, uh, happy to hear that, Minister. In relation to going forward, given the challenges that you know, were encountered this morning, what happens going forward? Are you going to take sort of contingency plans, putting in those in place to ensure that that doesn't recur?
Uh, Minister, are you still there? In here, the need for okay. investment. Yeah, what else I think we've seen here is the need for investment in the accommodation sector. Um, when Prime Minister Brown announced the Antigua Airways initiatives, uh, we did announce it, one, as a, uh, a gateway to Africa, with Antigua and Barbuda being a hub on one hand and a destination on the other. We also see it in relation to investment in Liat and the, the movement of per Right. Then been ferried into other been ferried to other destinations by Liat. And so what we're seeing here is a, a concept being built out. Maybe it's been built out faster than we even anticipated. And we, we will need to really take hold of it and, and, and ensure that the vision that drives this one is a successful vision. But I, I think we should feel a sense of satisfaction that what is happening here is a, 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 an uptake of the offer to have Antigua about this service as a gateway to the Caribbean because all the persons arrived this morning are sustained Antigua. There are some who transit in Antigua to other Caribbean destinations. There are some who are staying here. Uh, and so, again, it's a vision that is being fleshed out. Uh, what is sad is that uh, our political football sorts in the need of it. When really and truly, we, we, we should be looking at the value of it to the economy and the fact that we're trying to diversify our, our, our tourist mix, uh, diversify the, 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 and increase the, the visitor arrival to a country uh, to help with the rebuilding of the economy. Um, I, I heard stories. To me, positive stories of persons seen in bands and other places in grocery stores. That sounds like economy. That sounds like commerce taking place, as opposed to the negative narrative that they are poor people. Uh, you know, that is not what. That's not very helpful at this stage. We should have seen it for what it really is: persons spending money directly to the economy. Yes. Uh, a final question, Minister. You touched on it a while ago in terms of the, uh, in some circles, the politicization of the issue, according to you on this. Uh, can you assure the nation that there's no political undertone in relation to this? Well, there's none. I mean, from day one, there are persons in the opposition who try to rubbish the idea of Antigua Airways. And so what, we, what we're hearing now, should be seen in the context, uh, the continuation of that attack on Antigua Airways. Persons who see Antigua Airways concept as something that will help the Gaston Board administration to cement it's, it's, it's management of Antigua Barbados economy because it means and it represents bringing jobs for people, opportunities for people. Um, the small hotel properties that are now accommodating these folks uh, are benefiting tonight. And what we're seeing here is, again, the, the, the fact that our hotel or tourism season coincides with what is happening here. And we don't have room sufficient to accommodate persons from, from, from Africa on these flights. Now, if this will happen this summer months, we will not have any of this conversation not even in the, the, the toughest political um, battle. Because in some ones, we have a, a plethora of rooms that are available that would not make for, for the fodder that people are trying to make of this one. But because we're in the winter season, where all our rooms are full, all our Airbnbs are full because of yachting and the, the, the regular tourism um, um, season, we are having a challenge with persons coming to Antigua now in larger numbers. And like I said, it was not a simple flight. It was only a flight with 30 persons for yet. It's 200 plus persons that came last night. And so you can see that what, what, we, what we're looking at here is the government opening up an avenue um, to attract more, more, more prisoners to the country and the need for us to now have that conversation with, the, with corporate Antigua, persons willing to invest their, their resources into the, the hotel sector to build smaller properties to accommodate this market. It's a niche market. And if we can have this as a sustainable product into the summer months and, you know, for all times, for, it, um, for that matter, it means our tourism product will have a great mix. It will allow for cash injection in the economy on a continued basis. And all we should be talking about other people is sustaining this model. How do we sustain it? How do we make sure that when persons come, we have enough rooms for them, um, where we can continue to create employment opportunities, generate opportunities for wealth creation on the part of that sector that will cater to this need. Because again, this is part, this doesn't happen overnight. It is not empiric, it is something real. We gave a vision to the people of this country that we're going to expand Antigua Barbados tourism into the motherland. African tourism is nothing new. It happens all over the world. You have more Nigerians, for example, in London than Antiguans in Antigua. And so it's, it's, it's real. It's happening for us. Like I said, it's happening at a time, at a pace perhaps faster than we anticipated it. It's happening sadly at a time when politics seems to be the only consideration that some people can bring into the, into the conversation. But we as a people need to debunk, disappear the, 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 the ourselves of this political um, sound, there's not, how can you bring an idea into Antigua to vote in an election in, 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 in uh, 21 days' time? That makes any sense to you? I mean, it, it really is, is, is foolishness. And if you go back, like I said, you can tie it 
to the original comments of the UPP, the opposition party, trying to rubbish a very important um, element of our development, Antigua Airways, which is serving as an air bridge between Africa and the Caribbean. We are a hub, and we have to accept the people that we have to find creative ways to build and rebuild our economy. And this is one of the ways. The speed which is happening is, for some people, frightening. The fact that it is happening, for some people, it is not only frightening, but very disturbing for them, because it means that they will be languishing for many more years in the political wilderness as we bring benefits to Antigua and Barbados. And that, let us not forget, we talk about African brothers and sisters, and we are not replaying politics with them in the, in the meanest, vilest way. We need to show that we have that love for our, our ancestry, our, our ancestral lines, and not bring this into a political football situation. Our Minister, final question here on this. Uh, in relation to, go, as I said, going forward, uh, I mean, do, do we have an idea when the next charter flight comes in and would adequate arrangements have been in place for that to ensure that there's no recurrence of an accommodation challenge again? It's inter interesting. Like I made a point about us not having enough rooms. We've had to ask the, the organizers of these charters to, to kind of hold for the time being whilst we ensure that we have adequate facilities to accommodate because another charter is in fact June and Tiga tomorrow. We've had to ask that that be put on hold because, I mean, the, the, the political rhetoric is not in any way, can, um, you know, interesting to us. It doesn't face us one way or the other. That is politics. But we, uh, as a matter of reality, take into account the fact that we have, at the moment, a very um, popular destination, um, limited um, rooms, which are all showing full into March or so next year, April. And so we've got to be careful that we don't cause any damage to the brand Antigua. And so we've asked the organizers of these charters, and as much as we have this vision of building this, 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 this pathway, building this air bridge to, to the Caribbean, that we not go forward until we are satisfied that we have all of our ducks lined up where rooms are concerned. And my, my call tonight is simply for persons to go into the Ministry of Tourism, have a conversation, and let us seek to have the creation of additional rooms. When we had World Cup in 2007, persons were encouraged to build small properties. Those turn out to be major failures and, and, and financial drags on many people who lost them over time. We are now seeing the possibility through Alia from Africa of something that can be made sustainable, something which is attractive and is deserving of investment uh, by the, on the part of our people. And so that is the conversation that I want us to engage in tonight as a people, a meaningful conversation about how do we use this new addition of African tourism to promote our own tourism interests, to promote Antigua and Barbados as a gateway between Africa and the Caribbean. It's going to happen. If we don't do it, Barbados will do it. St. Lucia will do it. Somebody will do it. So the fact that we have inspirational leadership, that we have visionary leadership that is taking the lead on this one, it is something deserving of national um, recognition, national involvement, national embrace, so we can continue a pace to be the trendsetters in this region. Minister Green, really appreciate you joining us with the update there and indicating in breaking news that uh, a charter file was expected to come in tomorrow, but you've asked the organizers to hold off. Can you say until when? Well, I can't say when. I mean, we have to be careful. Like, again, all our rooms are full. And you do not want to have a situation like we were seeing this morning of persons coming, changing the accommodation last minute and finding it difficult to find an um, alternative accommodation. We have a brand also called Antigua Barbuda that has a very popular global appeal. And so that brand has to also be protected, um, notwithstanding our vision of, of, of opening up and embracing and, and, and being you know, visionary leaders in the tourism sector in the Caribbean. All right, Minister, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Minister Green is Minister for uh, Foreign Affairs, Immigration and Trade, joining us on Zoom to give us uh, details and an update in terms of the situation of Charlotte Fines from Africa. Really appreciate it, Minister. Thanks. In other news now, the World Health Organization is warning there is an increase in respiratory illnesses in children this season. Dr. Wilson Weir is WHO's Child Health Services Medical Officer. He proposes several potential causes for this spike. This may be because we are back to relative normalcy after COVID-19 and seeing viruses and bacteria spread again. Maybe some children did not have prior infections, so don't have any built-in immunity. Or maybe some of these viruses changed just a little bit and seem to be spreading faster. Maybe some children are getting multiple infections, so becoming more sicker than usual.
He advises parents to look out for the following symptoms and be on guard. Take a listen. To watch out for the red flags, worsening of these symptoms, specifically if a child is breathing too fast or having trouble breathing with the upper tummy getting sucked in, which we call chest in drawing, or when the lips or skin are turning blue, or when the child is constantly running a high temperature or throwing up, or is unable to breastfeed, drink, or eat. Dr. Weir also says age-old protection remedies, they still apply. There are three things parents can do to protect their children. First is practice good hygiene. Cover your mouth and nose with a mask or tissue. The second thing is to keep up to date with the child's vaccination, including for influenza and COVID-19. The third thing is to breastfeeding if a child is breastfeeding because breast milk is protective against these viruses in younger infants. Well, your beach plans might have been ruined today, but that's because an ongoing high surf advisory has deterred beachgoers from the usual holiday picnics. Well, forecasters had predicted swells of up to 10 feet, particularly on the northern and eastern sides of the island. Now, a high surf advisory means hazardous conditions could prevail and sea swells could cause life-threatening surfs and rip currents on affected coastlines. Our news team visited the Fort James and Renway Bay areas uh, today to determine whether residents would defy the advisory. Our camera spotted only a handful of people along the shores. And the high surf advisory also applies to Anguilla, the British Virgin Islands, and St. Kitts and Nevis. Meteorologists forecast normal wave heights should return from this weekend. So perhaps you want to adjust your plans. We're also tracking this developing story. Another primary school may soon be entering the next edition of Schools Panorama. Education Minister Daryl Matthews says the steel pans for Pandemonium are nearing completion. And the Pandemonium Steel Orchestra will be positioned right at the Golden Grove Primary School. And the director may need to ask you to come back perhaps the first uh, working day of the new year for us to do the official handover, if not sooner. Well, Minister Green believes that music program would be a net positive for the community. Music has a way of, of stimulating the cognitive abilities of students. Many studies have shown students who participate in music and musical activities tend to do better as well. Steel band, which is a rich part of our culture and our history in Antigua and Barbuda, has a way of attracting those persons who may otherwise become juvenile delinquents. So the young men in particular sitting on the corner, we now have an opportunity to give them something wholesome. Of course, that's Minister for Education and Sports, Daryl Matthew. Now, more from him because uh, he's hoping for a strong female presence within the band. He was speaking at the recent groundbreaking ceremony for the expansion of the Golden Grove Primary School. A look there at some of the national developments that we're tracking closely. When we come back from this break, we'll take you to news overseas. One of those stories that we're tracking closely will tell you about a promotion for a soldier uh, who was a me member of the uh, security guard or security detail in Guyana for State House. He was stabbed recently. We'll tell you about a promotion for him. And then farther afield, we'll tell you about uh, the Arctic conditions affecting North America from Canada all the way to the U.S.-Mexico border. Upcoming on the ABS Evening News, on air and online. Stay with us, please.